Hey guys, how are you doing today? And welcome back to another Small Engines Questions and Answers. I want to start off by welcoming all my new subscribers to my channel, and I also want to thank all of you who have sent me gifts. It's really appreciated. Please keep posting your comments. I can't get to all of them, but if you happen to be reading the comments and you know the answer, please answer it for other people. In my first question today, people sometimes ask me, is it a good idea to put Loctite on my connecting rod bolts when I reassemble my engine? Well, my answer to that is yes, I do it myself. And I use the medium strength blue Loctite. I just put it on the threads and then I tighten up the bolts to the specific torque that is recommended for them. It's not totally necessary to use Loctite on the bolts of the connecting rod, but I prefer using it as a backup. Oftentimes people see my Milwaukee impact guns in my videos and they ask me, how do you like these? Well, I really like these impacts and I actually use them every day. I actually have a tool review video on each of these units here. The links are under today's video so you can go watch them. The videos have been posted quite a while ago and just to show you here that they still run like the day I bought them. They're very durable tools. The batteries are good. They can charge up over and over again even if they're left in a cold shop. It's preferred that you do not let them get cold. And by the way guys, this one here is actually my favorite one to use. This is the fuel version and it has a brushless motor on it. They do use a lot less battery power. I find that the batteries do last a lot longer on this one. This other impact here is an M18. It's an 18 volt impact and it's not a brushless motor. So it uses more battery power. So definitely go check out my video reviews on these tools guys. Also in the video, there's the drill that goes along with the impact over here. Oftentimes people ask me, what do you do when you get a blown up engine in your shop that's not worth fixing? Well, this is what happens to those engines. I just basically strip everything off of them that is good. I put them in a box like this and mark it up as to what engine it is. And then I just use it for parts. As you can see here, there's still a lot of good parts that can be expensive if you had to go buy them out individually. This motor here came out of a snowblower and it ran without any oil in it, so it was seized. The engine block wasn't good anymore, but as you can see in the box here, there's still tons of parts, including the carburetor. Actually, if you need to buy a new carburetor for this engine here in Canada, it's over 100 bucks. Sometimes these engines can be more valuable in parts like this in the box than if you try to fix them up again. A question I often get about snowblowers is, why doesn't it blow snow like it used to? Now I'm just going to give you a couple examples as to what may be causing this. These are the first things you may want to check and sometimes they may not cost you any money to do. For example, on this MTD blower here, you would want to check the tightness of the auger cable. The cable's right here. You don't want it to be too loose. I've actually just adjusted this one. There is some loose, but not excessively. Basically, all you have to do is go underneath over here, loosen the two nuts, and then you want to turn in this metal part that's attached to the cable. By tightening it up, what that's going to do is make your cable a lot tighter and it's going to put a lot more pressure on the auger belts when you actually want to blow snow. And once the cable is tight enough, you just basically tighten up the nuts again. And on this snow blower here, it would be the same thing for the drive. The cable is set up the same way. All you have to do is reach underneath the same way you did for the other cable and tighten it up. Oftentimes, that's all I have to do on these MTD snow blowers to make the drive work good again. Another thing you may want to check on the condition of your blower if it's not blowing properly is the condition of the belts. If your belts are cracked and glazed and perhaps stretched, you're just not going to get the same tension on the pulleys from the belts and the pulleys may slip on the belts once you hit a large amount of snow. It will probably blow okay if you have a small amount of snow, but as soon as you go into deep snow, it's going to stop blowing. Actually, on some snowblowers, the auger idler belt pulley is adjustable. All you have to do is loosen up the bolt, move it forward, and then when you use the augers, it's going to put more pressure on the belts. In this case here, this is an MTD snowblower. The pulley is not adjustable, so you cannot use that feature. So if you continue to have other issues, you may want to look into other things on your blower if it's an MTD. On most Honda, Murray and older Noma snowblowers, the auger idler belt pulley is adjustable. I cannot get the wheels off my snowblower. Well, that's often due to rust building up between the rim and the drive shaft. One way to try to loosen it is by spraying penetrating oil in here and let it soak for quite a few days. Another option you have is to remove the pin over here. 
and maybe driving it without the pin as some YouTubers have suggested will eventually loosen the drive shaft from the rim. Another option is to heat up this part of the rim over here that goes on the drive shaft and also the back part of the wheel over here with oxyacetylene torches. Now if you do this you don't want to heat up the rim so badly that you get a tire explosion. First you should remove the air valve in the stem or remove the tire from the rim before you do this. Now what I've done in the past is I've had snow blowers with rims seized on the drive shafts and people did not want to pay the money to get them off the shaft. So what I did is I just basically put in the tube while the rim and the tire was still on the snow blower. It's a bit more cumbersome but it's a lot quicker and cheaper for the customer than to try to get the rim off the drive shaft. And sometimes it doesn't always work. The drive shaft may end up breaking or you could end up damaging other parts if you heat them up too much. Now sometimes you're absolutely going to need to remove the wheel because you're going to find that your bushings are completely wore out. In that case you may have to sacrifice some parts, either the wheel or the drive shaft. And that's especially if you don't have any torches to heat them up properly to get it off. Now a good tip to prevent this from happening in the first place is when you get your blower and you're still able to remove the wheels from the drive shaft is put a lot of grease on the drive shaft or anti-seize before you put the wheels back on. That will ensure that your wheels never seize on your drive shaft. And what you can do to ensure that it never seizes is do this every year when you do your maintenance. When I do maintenance on the snowblower, that is part of the package, is I take the wheels off, grease the shafts, and then put the wheels back on. My last question today is, do you have to replace a lot of carburetors because no matter how often you clean them, the machine still won't run properly? Well, my answer to that is yes. I've never had to replace so many carburetors as I've done in the last two to three years. Either the carbs are made differently nowadays or the fuel with the ethanol is causing major issues in carburetors nowadays. I used to be able to clean a lot of carburetors and save them, but I've noticed in the last few years that I can clean a carb three, four times, rebuild it, put it in the ultrasonic cleaner, and it still won't run properly. That can end up taking a lot of your valuable shop time and it ends up being a complete waste of time. So after I've cleaned a carb a few times and it still doesn't run properly, I just replace it. Now you're going to notice that on some equipment you're able to save the carburetor more often than on other pieces of equipment. So again, if you can't get a carburetor to run properly after you've done every imaginable thing you can, do not think that you failed at trying to fix it. It's smarter to just replace the carburetor than to waste a whole day trying to clean one that will never work properly. So thanks for watching today guys and make sure to follow me on Facebook, Google+, Twitter and Instagram. The links are underneath today's video and have yourselves a great day.